It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It's a Wisdom Wednesday with Professor Andrew Brandt back here on a Wednesday, back-to-back weeks. Had to have Andrew this week. I know we kind of do the every other thing with Andrew, the host of the Business of Sports podcast, the best of its kind. You guys should check it out. What he did with Jim Rooney, talking about the Rooney rule this week, amazing. If you have any interest in that whatsoever, even if you don't, you should absolutely listen to that. We will get to Andrew momentarily. Of course, the Even Money in College Draft podcasts are already posted from yesterday. We will record the only Fantasy Feast with Joe Dolan a little bit later this morning. Only two days away already from a new Spread the Word winner at Ross Tucker NFL, at Ross Tucker Pod. You know we love the replies. We really love the quote tweets. That way we can tweet it out to our other followers. They can see you guys saying how much you love the show. It's a great way to be able to get any of these press passes that you want or a signed picture card. So many cool sponsors today, Ladder, we'll talk about, AutoZone, Visa, of course. And then how about the YouTube shout-out? People pay for these things. People pay me to do these things on Cameo. You get it for free just by subscribing to the YouTube page and going ahead and making any comment. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. Much to discuss, Andrew, as always. Remember to check him out on social media. That is the key. At Andrew Brandt is his handle. You got to check out his Sunday 7 newsletter. You know, if you go to his Twitter profile or if you just follow him on Twitter, you'll see him tweet every once in a while. The link to that. Certainly the business of sports is awesome. I'm glad, Andrew, that this week is the week you dove into the Rooney rule because that's going to be a – a major topic over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, thanks, Ross. It's something that I thought we should do because we sort of put the Rooney Rule in our background and these guys had reached out over the years and I'm like, okay, it's time. And when I say these guys, Jeremy Drury's a professor at American University College of Law and Jim Rooney is the son of the namesake of the Rooney Rule, Dan Rooney, the late owner of the Steelers. And they really have been working on this for 20 years. It's hard to believe it's been around 20 years. We go into the history of the rule when it was just the head coach, then the coordinators, then the general manager, and just minorities, and then women. So it's really a deep dive, kind of a master class about the Rooney rule. I'm really proud we did it. I don't think there's anything else out there like this. And it gives you a good insight as we go into hiring season Bears, Vikings, Giants, Jaguars, et cetera, and the general managers, what's the requirements and what's the impact of the Rooney rule going forward? Andrew, obviously the the podcast is awesome with Jim, but I want to ask you one question. Do you think it's working and or still necessary? Uh, I do think it's working to the point where you're going to find a network of people now that you wouldn't find before because as everyone knows you tend to hire people or work with people or be around people like you it's just human nature look like you think like you and the rooney rule really demands an accounting of people that maybe don't look like you or think like you and in that sense it's working i think we focus too much on how many gms are black how many coaches are black And I think on the bigger stage, all throughout the organization, it is working, but there's work to do where we don't, you know, you know, Ross, I don't want to get too socially active here, but we want to get to a point where we're not asking, are they interviewing black candidates? And we got to get there. I'm not sure how long that's going to take, but um, I think we're getting there. And you can hear on the podcast, all the stats over the years of the improvements, head coach, coordinators, general managers, scouting directors, et cetera. Speaking of hiring and firing season, there, there's a lot going on um, right now, Andrew. I think the most surprising move that I need to get your take on, I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, 
was the Miami Dolphins firing Brian Flores, which seemed to have come out of nowhere. And I don't know, it appears there was some type of a power struggle there or a, a personality issue. Your reaction to that one? Well, I think you just mentioned it. A lot of people are going to focus on, hey, they're a pretty good team. Is this a why this guy and he's black and and then the Rooney rule and how about white coaches with this kind of record don't get fired and what happened and as I tweeted out which got tremendous you know he's the the general manager's the one that drafted Tua nothing wrong with Tua but ahead of Justin Herbert who may be a a world class talent and then the one that traded six picks to to give away a first to the Eagles in this coming draft. And then they fire the coach. But you just hit on it, right? These power struggles we don't see unless you're there, unless you're sort of inside, you don't hear about this. And that's the problem sometimes that, you know, people ask, why did that happen? Well, they didn't get along. So if we're hearing about it now, Ross, it was really bad. <laughs> you know, because once these things get out, it's like, oh, we didn't know about that. And it probably existed for a long time. Meaning the general manager and the coach did not agree on the direction of the team, meaning the owner had to choose and the owner chose the GM and the GM will now bring in the new coach and they'll be on the same page. I think we lose sight of that when we talk about firings and hirings. It's not so much about record. It's not so much about performance. It's like, is everyone on the same page here? Are we moving forward? Are there internal disputes? What's going on? And the Dolphins is shining a light on something we don't talk about enough, which is coach and GM having different visions. Yeah, so one thing that's a trend this year, um, not so much in Denver, where they only let go of the coach, Vic Fangio, but in Minnesota, in Chicago, and now in New York with Gettleman, retiring and Joe judge going ahead and being fired last evening. It feels like both all those teams are going to hire these next two people concurrently, uh, which for a long time, people have said that's the right way to do it. Do you think that's important? You think it's the right way to do it to bring them both in at the same time? I don't know. I mean, it's sometimes it doesn't work out like that and you can't say, well, we should fire it one or the other because you know timing doesn't work that way you talked about some situations where we're going to have that with the giants the vikings and the bears but in these other situations jaguars broncos we're not going to have that and we're having a, a gm that's staying i guess the proof will be in the pudding like in five years like how did the bears vikings giants do compared to broncos jaguars etc I'm not really sold on either way. I mean, I think the obvious point is it's great to have new people at the same time. But for instance, in Denver, they took a GM who'd been forever with the Vikings and just hired him last year. So he's not going anywhere. Um, so he'll bring in his, his coach and that'll be the new vision just a year later than Bears Vikings. You know, it's interesting, Andrew, because no matter how they do it, right? It's either you hire the GM and that guy has a big say in who the head coach is or you hire the head coach and it feels like he kind of gets to gets to bring his guy with him as the GM. It, it it doesn't seem like it's really two independent processes. It seems like the organization decides which one's the priority. And then once they get that guy at what they deem the priority, he has a major influence on the other guy, right? It's, it's not like, it's never, and, and I don't know if that's right or wrong. It's probably right. You probably want these guys to know each other or be on the same page, but it's not like it's two totally independent processes running concurrently. No, it's not. And, and you want people on the same page. And that's what didn't happen, obviously, in uh, New England. I'm sorry, in, in Miami. Uh, I'm both, co both coach and general manager came from New England and it didn't work out. And they did come in together. 
So there's no right or wrong formula. Just a note, Ross, we say this every year. I think it's our time to say it, and I say it. The finality of this, and I've been around the NFL a long time. It never ceases. I never overestimate it. It's one day the place is hustling and bustling as it was for six months, and the next day players are packing boxes. The place empties out. It always struck me, whether it was the day after the regular season, the day after we lost in the playoffs, the day after we lost the championship game, my experience in Green Bay, I would stand at the door, Ross. I felt like the camp counselor at the end of summer. Like, bye, bye, bye. And I never forget, I think it was Al Harris, maybe Charles Woodson. They would sort of look at me with like this sadness for me, like, Andrew, are you, are you leaving? Or are you staying? <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 this is my job. You know, I'm staying like, oh, okay. It's cold. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, because they were all off to Texas and Florida and California and everywhere. But it, people don't realize that. Like, think about it. Think about like, you're in this building for six months and it's just activity nonstop. And then Monday morning, in an hour, you know this, boxes are packed, gone. Like, gone, the building is empty, quiet. Like you go from, pick a number, 300 people to 50 people. Like, it's amazing. It's you like, know, amazing. I've told, I've told this before, Andrew, nobody told me that my rookie year. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. So like... I think I might have taken the rest of that week off, but then the next Monday, I, you know, I had an apartment in Virginia. I yeah. lived in Virginia. I thought that's where my job was. So the next Monday I came in and there wasn't even any strength coaches. There was <laughs> nobody in there. I was I was I was like, uh, that was the only year of my career that happened. I didn't realize that nobody's there until the off-season program starts and nobody told me that it's kind and of now, funny and now the uh, cba cba even mandates like you can't even get near that place for three months till april so yeah back then they didn't say that away. um do you have a strong opinion andrew on hiring the gm first and then the head coach or the head coach first and then the gm i mean if i had to go it would be gm first you know we um when we did interview the coaches, it was always from the GM angle, you know, what do you think of our personnel? How would you use it? And that's a, that's a decision for the GM. That's not a decision really for even ownership. It's like GM has to have a coach that utilizes personnel the way they want it. A couple other things I want to get to with you. So you've also been an agent. Um, Jamison Williams, projected first round pick, wide receiver for Alabama. Tore his ACL in the national championship game on Monday night. And I tweeted immediately, Andrew, at Ross Tucker NFL, that I envision this making the – and we'll see how high he gets drafted. And maybe he still goes in the first round. And maybe as a result of that, people don't realize the amount of money he lost because maybe he would have gone pick 16. Now he goes pick 24 or whatever. But maybe it doesn't have that much of an impact because he still goes first round. But my initial reaction watching that was this is going to make even more kids opt out. So yeah. I guess the question is, you know, if you were an agent, if you were an advisor for top prospects, really even for next season, let alone next season's bowl games, what would you be saying to them? great question i mean I, when i saw the jameson williams i'm like how far will he go people are asking me will he go back to a alabama he's got another year i'm like no he won't do that <laughs> because he'll still the money he would lose is not the same as staying another year and putting that off i think we've have gotten to the point ross where opt-outs of anything but the final four games are accepted and, and expected now. Question is, will we see an opt-out of the Final Four game after this? I don't know. I, I think the one thing we will see more of is the, was it the Nick Bosa situation 
where he got hurt like in the first couple games of the year, minor injury, and then he just said, I'm just going to prepare for the draft. I thought Jadavian Clowney would do that one back in the day, and people say he didn't play that hard his, his year, last year of eligibility. So I think we may see more of that sort of beyond the bowl game. Because once you get to the bowl games, then it's still this feeling like, hey, you're quitting on your team, especially if it's going to be a Final Four Bowl. Uh, But we may see it earlier in the season for the real, true top picks. You know, you've been pretty consistent, Andrew, over the last couple years that you believe this is Aaron Rodgers' last year in Green Bay (laughs) and that he will be traded after this year. He's probably going to be the MVP again. They might go to the Super Bowl and win it. Do you still really feel that way? Now, Ross, I thought we were a month away from talking about this. (laughs) But, but I, you know, you put it on my plate here early. Uh, I know everyone's asking me. I'm trying to tell people on social media, let's just wait till February. I mean, at this point, I'm, I'm where I've been. I know everyone came at me last year when I said, He'll be back, no problem. Uh, So my consistent stance has been since April or since March last year. He'll play for the Packers in 2021. He'll be traded in 2022. I've said this for reasons of both sides of the coin, right? That he doesn't seem extremely happy with the Packers organization. And I know they've coexisted six months and people say it looks better and blah, blah, blah. But the other side of it, which people don't talk about enough. They drafted his replacement. Now, I know he's Aaron Rodgers. How could you go to a rookie? How could you go to Jordan Love? But at some point, you have to stand for your principles. And I think the Packers organization made a decision in the draft of 2020 to move on in 2022. Could they put that off? Sure. I could be wrong. But I just think principally, and I know this organization well, They make stands, and their stand has been, we're going to move on from Aaron Rodgers, get a bounty of draft picks, and go to the next guy. And I know, I know people, everyone, like, how could you do that with the MVP? We'll see. That sounds like a great way to get fired if you're Brian Gutekunst, in my mind. You better pray that Jordan Love can play and play well otherwise you're toast that's how i look I, I mean it's hard to look at it any other way andrew ross i heard exactly what you're saying from thousands 15 years ago exactly what you just said you all are going to get fired how could you move on from brett Favre to this unknown aaron Rodgers? i know i i get it i get it i get it we'll see Let's do a whole session, a whole segment on this in a month. <laughs> yeah, you know, too, I mean, like the the Vegas odds that Jordan Love is also a top five quarterback that uh, wins MVPs and goes to the Hall of Fame, not real good. Like the Vegas odds, you get three of them in a row, not real good. Check him out everywhere. The best way is always social, at Andrew Brandt. That way you know everything he's up to, whether it's writing for MMQB, the awesome Business of Sports podcast. Man, there's nothing else like it. I love the deep dive in the Rooney Rule. Highly encourage you guys to check that one out. Andrew, thank you so much for the time, as always. All right, Ross. Thanks so much. Love talking with Andrew Brandt. Love things that make my life easier. Love things that can protect my family or yours. Ladder is 100% digital. No doctors, no needles, no paperwork. When you apply for $3 million in coverage or less, all you need is a few minutes, a phone or laptop. The algorithms work in real time, so you'll find out instantly if you're approved. No hidden fees. Cancel anytime. Get a full refund if you change your mind in the first 30 days. If you've thought about a gift for yourself or your family, how about a policy from Ladder? They're issued by insurers with long proven histories of paying claims. And as I know most of you know, life insurance costs more as you get older. 
So the sooner you do it, the better. Go to ladderlife.com slash Ross today to see if you are instantly approved. That's L-A-D-D-E-R life.com slash Ross. Ladderlife.com slash Ross. Tux Takes. Good morning, Ross. Well, let's start with your take on the biggest news from yesterday, which is the firing of Giants head coach Joe Judge. Yeah, I mean, um, not surprised. I thought it was sort of, it sort of became an untenable situation for them to keep him after the press conferences the last couple of weeks, after the quarterback sneak. I just think it's almost like he wanted to get fired. I've said that before. I'll say it again. He did several things that it was like he was looking to get fired. I, I mean, I don't have another great explanation for it. I don't think Freddie Kitchens would have said, let's run quarterback sneak on second and third and nine in that situation. I mean, I know Joe Judge is a special teams coach by trade, but come on, man. I just think the Giants for their organization, for their fan base, they had to give them some hope. They, like, I, I, I cannot imagine how rough the offseason, the ticket sales, everything would have been if they kept Joe Judge as their coach next year. It just, it just wasn't a situation that they could stick with. Tux Takes. Uh, let's talk about Brian Flores being fired from Miami as well. You and Andrew touched on it, and I know you touched on it a little bit yesterday on the Power Rankings podcast, but want to go a little bit more in depth here. Right. I felt like this one, since it was a surprise, deserved a little bit more attention. And I even got a couple of emails, Ross at RossTucker.com, for people that were looking forward to it. You know, I've read a bunch about it now. And, you know, Brian Flores had a uh, a prickly personality at times. I think he would probably tell you that that's the way he had to be to try to get the most out of his organization. You know, that's how Belichick is. You know, that's what Charlie Weiss has talked about, Bill Parcells. They believe in grinding on people. Just grind on the players, grind on the coaches to get as much out of them as you possibly can. You're not there to be the good guy. You're not there to make it sure everybody's happy and comfortable. They actually like when people are uncomfortable. They believe uncomfortable people work harder, work longer. I'm not a really big fan of that style, but it's been very successful. Parcells, Belichick, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys that have been like that over the years where you grind on players, grind on coaches. So that's one part of it. The other part of it, it's just a shame he couldn't get along with Chris Greer. And to Andrew's point about, well, Chris Greer is the guy that traded. Chris Greer is the guy that wanted to uh, not Herbert. You know, the more you read, that might not be the case. That said, a coach's job is to maximize the talent that they have. And I do believe that Brian Flores did that. So the Dolphins better get it right with this next hire because you want to talk about a disgruntled fan base. That is for sure the Miami Dolphins fan base right now. You know, evidently this has been going on for a while. You'd like to think that Stephen Ross could have stepped in and been like, hey, guys, you need to get along or I'm going to make a change. Maybe he did. You know, maybe he did. Tux takes. Speaking of coaches getting fired, Matt Rule got rid of both of his line coaches as well as the special teams coordinator, Chase Blackburn, in Carolina. Right. So, um, you know, I don't know. If, if Matt Rule thought that these coaches were underperforming or they weren't getting the most out of their units and made this decision, that is fine. That's business. If these guys are sacrificial lambs because the, the owner said, we got to do something. We got to make it look like we're making some changes. So Rule, like, you know, 
picked three coaches to fire, which I think happens a decent amount, that's garbage. Tux takes. And finally, your thoughts on the Broncos' ownership situation being resolved such that they can now actively accept bids. Yes, kicking myself. I wanted to ask Andrew about that, and I forgot. That is on me. Uh, apologize, because there's nobody better to ask about that than Andrew. So maybe in a couple of weeks, there'll be a little bit more buzz about the different bidders. But all you need to know is the Broncos are for sale because they couldn't really figure out who was going to be next in line in the Bolin family. There was supposedly someone that thought they had a right of first refusal on the sale. He doesn't. So now it's open and there's at least six different groups bidding reportedly. One of them is a group with Peyton Manning in it. Another one is a group with John Elway in it, which gets pretty darn juicy because those guys are going to be competitive as heck to be part of an ownership group. By the way, your car interior is as important as your exterior. Why? Because that's where you spend most of your time, actually inside your car. I think here's the deal I would say. This is number one thing. I am a believer in taking care of things ahead of time. I'm a believer in being proactive rather than procrastinating. So, like, if you get seat covers, they help prevent the spills, the tears, the rips, and the UV rays from ruining your upholstery and can even help maintain your resale value. That's the type of stuff I like to do, right? Like, get ahead of it, spend a little bit of money now to take care of something to save a bunch of money later. If you need an interior upgrade fast, AutoZone has more ways for you to get it, however you want it. Like free next day delivery, free same day store pickup. Make AutoZone your one stop car interior shop. They carry the best products from the best brands at the right price. Get in the zone, AutoZone. Let's do an email, Brian. Ever wanted to ask an NFL player a question? Well, here's, here's your, your chance. chance. It's time to ask Ross. So the email address always ross at rosstucker.com. I actually got an email this week about. Someone that wants me for a speaking engagement, love it. Love it. Any Anything you ever need from me, email me, ross at rosstucker.com. You want to advertise on the show, speaking engagement, let me know. Certainly, love, love, love when you take advantage of any of the sponsors. And then send me an email. I guarantee to read and respond to it on the show, Brian. All right. Well, today's question from John Thomas, who took advantage of the Raycon code Tucker15 to get his wife some new earbuds. He's also been the Spread the Word winner and the YouTube shout-out winner in the past, uh, going for the Triple Crown here with the sponsor confirmation. Uh, need a signed press pants to use as a bookmark. Uh, I use your signed bills card when I, uh, when I read uh, textbooks now. Anyway, my question, actually for me, curious about more of the technical details behind your professional audio recordings, favorite mics, audio interfaces, and how has the show's hardware evolved over time? different setups, travel, phone guests, challenges, or any funny stories. So uh, I guess I'll take this one, Ross. That's from John Thomas, by the way. I don't know if you said that or not. I did. I did at the okay. at, at the top. So, John, uh, what we're using right now is kind of uh, – it's called StreamYard. It's like Zoom on steroids. So everybody calls in at once, uh, and we can do it remotely. We can do it from our houses, et cetera. And over time, this has definitely made things a lot easier. Uh, we used to use different uh, pieces of hardware. Everybody would have to call in on a different line. And yeah, and sometimes it could get dicey. But uh, favorite microphones, really any of the ones that you get off of a uh, USB microphone off of Amazon will do the trick. Um, I like the ones from Rode, from Yeti, and from Audio Technica. Hopefully that helps. If you have any other questions, you can reach out to me directly and happily walk you through anything if you're doing a similar setup. And it's good timing for that email question because of like what we did at the airport Monday, Briar, when yeah. you're on the road. I mean, the airport one, I actually, something was going wrong with my laptop. So that was off my phone that I did it. So the audio quality, not quite as good. Brian's typically a stickler for that. We try to have the best audio quality possible, but sometimes it's just not, not in the cards. We got to do the best we can because we know you guys – want your podcast it's part of your daily routine shout outs are in order p 
Pizza Boy Brewing, delicious. I will be going there soon. Uh, speaking of that, by the way, if any of you know anything about Corning, New York, I might be staying in Corning, New York. So if you know a place I should eat or get a beer or anything in Corning, New York, let me know. It's kind of halfway between where I am and Orchard Park for the Bills game. Sportaculture. Uh, we're going to get a giveaway with them in the spring. I feel like their, their gifts are perfect for the spring. Vision Comics with an X. HumanHeadNYC.com. And then SteakhouseSports.com. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 109WITHIT. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always, sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 